up everybody so we're back out in the shop with another daily vlog and before we start this video I want to give you all a sneak peek of the kydex material that came in to make the sheath for that file knife so this is what we have right here it's a dark gray kind of like a charcoal gray but it's actually got a basket weave pattern I wanted something that was quite a bit different than what we used in the past and that had a little bit of texture to it um, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be using this navy blue as well. And I know that some of y'all might be thinking, hey Eric, why aren't you doing a, like orange on there or something like that because it would really match the handle scales. I want the handle scales to stand alone. I want them to be something that pops on there. I don't want to put uh, orange on there and kind of make it blend in. That's not the goal here. I want some subtle tones. Now there is both gray and blue in this knife so gray blade uh, there's blue in the handle scales but i want that orange to really stand out whenever i get done with making the sheath for this so that's why i'm doing that and we'll talk more about that and whenever i actually do that video but what is today's video about it is time to go ahead and shape these handle scales it's gonna be so cool having that little kind of tillish color we call it mallard green, but it is really like a teal green. Love the way this is going to turn out. I know that some people might be thinking, why did you do brass pins on this blacked out knife? You should have done silver or you should have done black micarta pins or something like that. Well, for one, getting pin material right now is close to impossible. It takes a long time to get that stuff, but I like the color contrast of dark scales with brass pins. It just stands out to me. And I would rather have that than the silver. It's just personal preference. It's my knife. I'm, I'm making it how I like it. So that's what we're going to be doing. And uh, let's go ahead and start shaping these things. I'm really interested how it's going to look whenever I start contouring it. I've got an idea of what I want to do. But I really need to get into it to see what's going to happen. So let's jump into it. Let's get it knocked out. So it's time to start shaping some handle scales. What we're going to start off with is grinding down the pins, so a little bit of excess that was left after we pressed the handle scales together. And then we're going to go into just profiling the outside of the handle scales to where they're even with the tang itself. And just try to pay attention to making sure that you keep them as flat as possible to where you kind of keep a consistent angle all the way around them. It's real easy to make one side a little bit lower than the other side and then they start, it starts messing with the angles. Now, one of the next steps that we're gonna do is gonna help keep everything square, but because you're able to take off so much material with a 40 grit belt on a belt grinder, you just gotta be careful not to go too far past it and you start messing with the profile of your handle. So with this step, we're going to take the smallest drum that my oscillating spindle sander has and we're going to go ahead and start getting into that finger tool area and just smoothing it out and then we're going to use this one to square everything up. This is just going to go around the edge of the handle and square everything to the tang. You just want to take your time and do things like this because whenever you start contouring your handle, little steps like this is going to make it to where your end product is so much better. that part done it's time to take it over to the 2x72 again and we're going to start working in those major contour parts and what this is going to do is it's going to start making that 
palm swell stand out. So that's what we're contouring right now. And what I'm doing is I'm using the pins as my measurement points for how far I'm going forward and backwards with this. It's a lot easier to use those than any other part because the pins are even on both sides. And what you want to do whenever you're doing this is put it in your hand as often as possible. You don't want to go and grind too much and then not check it and now all of a sudden the palm swells on the wrong area of the knife where your fingers go they don't work out it's just everything's uncomfortable you don't want that to happen you want to check it over and over and over and over again until you are at the point to where you're hand sanding and then I still check it at that point as well now I do slow it down a few times each time I I checked this to give you an idea that it's just making sure your fingers are sitting where they need to sit, your palm is comfortable, things like that, and then just work it from there. And I do a lot of this by feel, not so much by measurement. I want everything to be comfortable and then I do a lot of my, if you want to call it measuring by eye, I do a lot of it that way. Uh, I'm lucky and I can do that. It's one of the things that I guess is just naturally <laughs> built into me that I can do a very good measurement by eye. So I trust that. Hasn't let me down yet. Now it's time to go ahead and work on the contour around the lanyard hole. And I like doing this because it makes it to where the lanyard is recessed into the handle scales and it doesn't stick out wider and mess with your hand whenever you're gripping a knife. And then we're going to take the largest drum for my spindle sander and just start smoothing out the contours that we just made. And all this is really for is just, like I said, smoothing those contours out. We're not really trying to take off a bunch of material. We're just trying to get rid of all of those jagged edges from the 40 grit belt that we put on there and then just start fine tuning the handle shape. Now with this contact, now with this drum, we're gonna go ahead and get into some of the little finer areas and start rounding them, smoothing them, contouring them, just getting everything to its final shape before we start hand sanding. And we will end up doing one more drum after this. Once I'm comfortable with that one, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the smallest drum again. And we're going to just start working into that ferritual area and just getting it super smooth and getting everything completely finalized for hand sanding. So that's what we're doing right here. We're just taking our time to shape it exactly how it needs to be shaped. And again, we're not trying to take off a ton of material. This is just us working it enough to get everything smooth. And we are using this to smooth out that little 
contour around the lantern hole as well. That way it gives us a nice finished product in the end. Now when it comes to hand sanding, I go with a 220 grit and then just go up through various grits all the way to 500. So your 300 and some odd grit, you know, you just want to take your time and sand these one direction. So if you're sanding down the sides where the pins are, you need to go one consistent direction. You don't need to go up and down and then go forward and back and then up and down, forward and back. You want to go forward and back the whole time. It, the reason behind that is whenever it comes time to buff your pins, it makes it a lot easier to buff them than you having scratches going multiple different directions. And you want to take your time to sand all the way down the spine so that you create those sand lines going all the way down, again, one direction, and it makes it a lot easier to buff. And this handle is one of the best feeling handles I've done. Absolutely love the grip on it, love the way it feels. I cannot wait to chop things with this. So the final step for this video is going ahead and getting it buffed. And we're just going to take our time with the green buffing compound on the fine wheel and just buff the whole entire outside of the handle. Be careful whenever you're doing this so that the buffer does not catch your knife and spin this thing into your stomach or your arm. Be careful when you're buffing at high speeds. Alright guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's daily vlog. Check this out. We got all those layers from the G10 right there. And we have just this nice little line of color right there. Just a little extra something. We got these awesome contours right here. We got our lantern hole contoured. Got the cool green showing up through there. I love the way this is shaped. It feels great in the hand because of that swell right there for your palm. That is a beautiful knife. Check that out. I just wanted to do something that was a little bit different and a little bit unique. I know that I'm not the person that came up with this idea, but I definitely you know, I am happy with how it turned out. This is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, just enough punch of color to break up the darkness that is this handle scale. But y'all tell me what y'all think about this. I think it was pretty successful, but I want to hear what y'all think. Uh, guys, there we go. So, what's up for next video? We're going to go ahead, we're going to put an edge on this, we're going to cut some stuff, chop some stuff, have some fun. I'm excited about that, but that's what's coming up on tomorrow's video. Guys, uh, one of the things that I have coming up here soon is going to be redoing my Kydex press with actual Kydex press foam. So we're going to be doing a new Kydex press. And I'm going to make it look a little bit more professional than the previous one that I did. So y'all be on the lookout for that. Guys, if you would, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or a video I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And if you haven't yet, bottom corner right there. Hit that subscribe button so you get notified for when we put the edge on this. Chop some stuff. Do some sheath work. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.